Who I tell you, it's hitting particularly good this morning. Morning, folks. Hope your coffee's as good as mine. Oh man, we have got we have got to talk about the big news of the day. We've got to talk about what's going on in Arizona. We've got to talk about the Republicans, what's happening with them and abortion. Uh, but before we do, we're going to go ahead and start off with a couple uh, smaller news stories that are actually just amazing. While we let people file in here, so do me a favor: reach down, hit the thumbs up button, so we can get this. Uh, uh, the algorithm to do the work for us and get as many people as possible in here. Let's let everybody shuffle in. And then we're going to get to the main story. I know they say never bury the lead. Not going to do that. Trust me. These are going to be interesting. You're going to love these and it's going to be really quick. Let's do this. Good morning, everybody. To start off, I'm a little pissed off this morning. It's it just not. Don't disrespect your elders. Don't do it. Just don't disrespect your elders. You know, there's one thing if there's a news story or something like that, but to just go out. Yeah, Kitty, the producers in the background. Um, just don't disrespect your elders. You know, Gene Hackman, one of my favorite actors, one of my favorite actors. Uh, is retired. He's 94 years old. He is retired. Great actor. Just, just the, just the body of work. I still go back and watch his movies. I mean, he is a great actor. Well, some jackhole thought it would be a really good idea uh, to film him. He likes to go down to this gas station where he lives, pick up a cup of coffee, fill up his truck, and go about his business. Somebody filmed him and two weeks in a row, not two days in a row, two weeks in a row. Thanks, Katie Carroll. I appreciate you. I, I, thank you for all the support. I Believe me, I see it, and, and, and I'm very grateful. That's a lot of money. Um, but, you know, we're not talking like two days in a row he wore the same after. We're talking about one week to the next week. And the New York Post decides to just run this. And he's not looking his best, folks. He's not. He's retired. And to me, this is just bullshit. Just crap. I mean, look at this. Doesn't this just piss you off? This is New York Post. That's the guy on the camera breathing, not me. You know, I mean, how rude can you get, man? Just leave the man alone. He's retired. He's dressing for the job he wants. He's retired. And New York Post thought it'd be a really great idea to run a whole story about how he wore the same outfit. You know, ooh, that Hollywood elite actor wore the same outfit two weeks in a row going to the same filling station to fill up his truck. This is the same New York Post that can't help but but fillet Donald Trump all the time, but never really say a word about this. You know, you talk about dress for the job you want. How many times have you seen that suit? How many times have you seen this jackass fit every time he goes, every time he was gone, the same exact outfit? And this guy wants to be president of the United States. 
Washington Post and say crap about a part of the New York Post and say crap about that either. I don't know. That just stuck in my crawl. That just stuck in my crawl. We also have uh, some news happening from, uh, I mean, local and around the world with with uh, glo- global warming. Um, there used to be a lake in California. It was the largest freshwater lake west of the Mississippi. It was called Tulare Lake. And when people started to settle in California, the government said, you know what, that, that's, that's some pretty good farmland there. And they drained it. I mean, it was massive. They would pay people to dig canals. They would you know, incentivize people to dig canals on their property. And they drained it. And the rest is history. You know, the, the San Joaquin Valley, all of that, where you get most of your produce, California, we get, we get most of our produce from California and that region, from that farmland, from where they drained Lake Tulare. And I'm telling you, y'all are always ahead of me. I love you people. You are the best. Data Lee says, Lake Tulare is back. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Mother Nature said, hold my beer. You know, global warming isn't about just everything getting hotter. It is about changing our weather patterns. And California went through a huge period of drought. Uh, You know, Lake Mead, all uh, the whole West, you know, Lake Mead was damn near empty. It was almost a dead pool. Um, But the weather patterns changed over the last couple of years. And after so long of not getting any snowpacks in the Sierra Nevadas, boom. Now we're talking about, uh, they, they call them uh, uh, um, rivers. Um, shit, I'm tongue-tied. Um, atmospheric rivers. They call them atmospheric rivers. And good Lord, Lake Tulare is back. 120,000 acres of farmland underwater. And this is this is really something, folks. I mean, this is just amazing. It, it, it's a combination of both excessive rain in the spring and a huge amount of snowpack in the Sierra Nevadas. That excessive rain caused really quick melt. It just worked together, synergized together. And Lake Tulare is back, folks. It is back. And it will be here for a year. It, they, they, they've estimated... Given the clay soil around Corcoran and 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 the Lake Tulare Valley, uh, it will take the better part of a year. And so far, it's one hundred and twenty thousand acres uh, that it's covered. So yeah, Mother Nature said, uh, "Hold my beer." <laughs> I, I know I shouldn't laugh. It's been a it's been a real tragedy for the farmers in the region. Um, the environmentalists are loving it because wetlands are coming back and here's the fascinating part about it folks um we're gonna have to make a decision because you know these weather patterns tend to not be one-offs global warming is changing our weather patterns but they don't change from year to year to year they're cyclical and there's a good chance that we could have this snowpack next year and the year after and the year after. Tulare Lake may be back to stay unless we intervene. And that's a decision that will have to be made because I guarantee you the environmentalists, the environmentalists are super happy about this. But the farmers who lost their farms and homes aren't. They, you know, and, and frankly, folks aren't going to be really pleased about the increases in your grocery prices because... For all the crap that that these right wingers like to talk about California, uh, the ignorant dummies don't know uh, California really does an amazing job of filling our refrigerators. Uh, a lot of your produce comes from California, and this is going to be an issue. And I'm really glad that we have Democrats around to actually take a look at it and deal with it. But it's not always mother nature messing with you sometimes it's just incompetence and in our recurring segment of russia is collapsing uh this is 
Orsk, Russia. This was not Mother Nature. This was normal. This was every day, uh, except for they did no maintenance on their bridges and their dams. I should say on their dams. Uh, they, they just let them deteriorate to the point where they actually couldn't pump water like they're supposed to. And we have a huge section of Orsk, Russia, which is now pulling the same thing that Tulare Lake is, but wasn't supposed to. I mean, this had nothing to do with Mother Nature just changing its mind. This was everyday weather and just the fact that Russia's broke. It is a collapsing nation. But I want you to check this out. This is the dam collapsing in the worst crusher. So yeah, you can you can you can see it's a disaster. Uh, several people have died. The uh, towns are underwater. Um, Russia's just a mess, folks. They're just a mess. You know, when, when, when we had our own instance with Tulare Lake coming back and Mother Nature saying, hey, here you go, here's, here's your lake back, um, we responded. We did. We, we can actually do something about this. Russia's just caught flat-footed. I mean, they're, 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 no one knows if they're going to be able to rebuild this dam, what they're going to be able to do. I mean, and it's a real disaster, folks. CNN actually had a little piece on it. I mean, entire towns are just underwater. You know what I found fascinating about, if you look at this picture in particular, their houses really aren't that different than ours. Their neighborhoods really don't look that different than ours. Modern construction techniques are worldwide, folks. I mean, this could be a fence in California. You know, if you didn't, if I didn't tell you this was Orts, Russia, would you know? I could tell you this was Cleveland. And you'd still believe it by the look of the houses. But yeah, just so you know where this is going on, and their neighbors in Kazakhstan are none are none too pleased about it because Orsk is is on the border of Kazakhstan, and th this is the Orsk region. Um, give you an idea, just all of Russia. Here's Moscow to the west of Orsk, and this is Kazakhstan. Orsk borders Kazakhstan, and it's the Ural, Ural River. Um, this whole area is flooding over into Kazakhstan and threatening their villages now as well. But yeah, that is today's. Admiral Newton says, I bet they will blame Ukraine for the collapsing dams and bridges. Yeah, no kidding, right? No kidding. Or perhaps, yeah. Or perhaps it's the, the gay people's fault. Yeah. That's Russia for you. That is Russia for you. We have a birthday. Happy birthday, Nancy and Steve. Thanks for sharing that. But yeah, the main story today is abortion. You know, for years we told you this was this was happening. Um, and and man, I, I gotta tell you, we're losing this fight. We are. We have really got to get together and we have really got to start getting very aggressive and very assertive. And we'll talk more about that in a minute. Um, the big news is in Arizona. In Arizona, the former governor, a guy by the name of Steve Ducey, 
um, our part, Governor Ducey, um, when they were overturning Roe v. Wade, like so many of these Republican legislatures and governor governments, went back and passed trigger laws. They knew the fix was in with the Supreme Court. So they passed trigger laws. They were laws that were to go into place if Roe v. Wade was ever overturned. These laws were pretty draconian, and they didn't really catch much hell for it at the time because Roe v. Wade was in place, and it was kind of considered show. People didn't really believe it, even though people like me were screaming, no, they're really going to do this. They're really going to do this. If you make this, if, if you put them in power and you give them the ability, they will do this. Well, the trigger law they passed in Arizona had a poison pill in it. I, I tell you what, let, let me let Steve Bannon explain this to you. Uh, I know you're saying, "What? I don't want to watch Steve Bannon. I hate Steve Bannon. I get it. I get it. You're going to enjoy this. You're going to enjoy this. One, they do a good job of explaining what happened in Arizona. But just take some joy in the sheer misery as they talk about it. Because the Republican Party was kick, just kicking off its reboot, its rebrand on abortion. After talking about what tough guys they were and how they were just going to make, uh, you know, pass a national abortion ban, and, you know, they there was nothing we could do about it, and we weren't going to be able to stop them, and just making up a bunch of vile crap. Uh, they found out the voters really don't like this and that we've managed to get uh, ballot measures in many battleground states that we're going to vote on in November, which is going to bring a lot of voters out that wouldn't normally show up for an election. So they've been in full freakout mode. E.T. says, meanwhile, other parts are in drought. Water will become the new oil. Yeah. Amen, E.T. The, the, this party's not over when it comes to, to drought and water shortage issues. Um, but yeah, the whole, I mean, the whole abortion thing has been a nightmare for Republicans. They're the dogs that caught the bumper of the car and they know it, especially with the stupid stuff that, that Donald Trump's been saying. So there was a whole new rebranding that was supposed to be happening right now. They'd already reached out to the corporate media. They had their talking points in place. Donald Trump came out and made a statement that said he doesn't support a nationwide ban. It should just be up to the states. <laughs> well, Arizona said, hold my beer. Let me let Steve Bannon explain it. You're actually going to like this, and I do want you to pay attention to just how miserable they sound. This is Steve Bannon talking to a Republican candidate that is running his name, Abraham Hamada, who's running in uh, uh, the eighth Arizona's 8th Congressional District. They're talking about what happened with this, and just their misery is just... Realize what was with what was within that piece of legislation. It was saying that yeah, if Roe v. Over. Wade was over back in 2022, then Governor Doug Ducey and the state legislature, you know, they kind of saw that Roe v. Wade might be overturned, so they passed a 15-week abortion restriction. But what many people don't realize what was with what was with that's the trigger laws I was talking about. Those trigger laws were passed in states all across the country. Uh, the one here in Texas was just as awful, and it went into effect, and we're going to talk more about that here in a minute. In that piece of legislation, it was saying that if Roe v. Wade was overturned, it would go to the pre-Roe uh, v. Wade law, which then in turn went to the territorial ban. So when now the Supreme Court uh, has litigated whether that ban, since Roe v. Wade was uh, took effect whether the 15-week ban is the current law of the land or whether it reverts back to the the territorial ban which which bans abortion with the exception of the 
I, I just really want to just drive it home how miserable these guys sound because these guys, these these same two guys, were talking about you know Governor Ducey is the man. He's the man when they pass this trigger law. They were so they were dunking. They were just so excited when this trigger law got passed because you know hey. All the evangelicals are going to love us. They're going to send us money. They're going to show up to vote. Eh, turns out mm, people don't like this too much. The life of the mother and the Arizona Supreme Court, see, uh, you know, I guess today decided that the territorial ban is the law of the land. And, uh, you know, Steve, it's it's really funny because just today, the Arizona Court of Appeals. Hold on, hold on, hang on, hang on, ho, 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 hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Arizona made a state in 1910, 11, some around there. When did Arizona become a state? 1912. 1912. The territorial ban, you were a territory. The territorial ban is from 1864. That's correct. How do we, are we again, just the schadenfreude, just enjoy Steve Bannon was celebrating this trigger law. And now he's like, whoa, 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 this is from 1864 when it was a territory? What? <laughs> Did they actually consider in other Arizona law that that laws made when you guys were, I think the, was the state capital in Prescott then? Or was it in, was it in Tucson? How do they, do they refer to any, anything Anyways, I can't stand listening to that guy talk. That's like listening to Donald Trump talk, and we got to do that a little bit more too. And I can only handle so much of it. But yeah, I mean, just just when I watched that video, I was like, "Yes, reap what you sow, reap what you sow." And this, is, of course, is what he's talking about. The trigger law was challenged. Uh, the Arizona Supreme Court ruled on it and said, okay, the way the law is written, it says go back to the law prior to Roe v. Wade. And the law prior to Roe v. Wade was a law passed in 1864 when Arizona wasn't even a state. It was a territory uh, that bans all abortion, basically. And, and they say, well, it's almost all abortion. No, it's, it's all abortion. I mean, it's 14 days. Um, and feel free to talk to the women in the audience. Uh, 14 days, you don't know you're pregnant. Uh, so basically, it, it bans all abortion. It, except for, for the life of the mother, to defend the life of the mother, um, which creates we now know like we've seen here in texas the situation where the mother has to be dying um oh wait a minute uh your your water broke um sorry <laughs> uh wait till the baby dies wait till you go septic uh wait till you're near death and then come back not an exaggeration folks that that's what we're going to talk about here today that is really happening because we're going to draw the comparison between the Republicans, their rhetoric, their fantasy land made up crap and reality where we Democrats live and we Democrats actually legislate. We Democrats actually do what needs to be done. Rich says, sure need to clean up our Supreme Courts. Yes, we do, Rich. Yes, we do. That is part of what we're going to talk about. I am not, exi I am, this isn't hyperbole, folks. When I say we're losing on this, we're losing on this. Anyways, one of the reasons that Steve Bannon was so upset was, like I was saying, the Republicans were having their big rollout, their big rebrand on abortion. Trump, their candidate, came out against a nationwide border, uh, a nationwide ban on abortion. Can you believe that? What? What? Not kidding. Mike Pence was pissed. Mike Pence came out and just excoriated Donald Trump and said, basically said, "You have betrayed our evangelical voters 
Because Donald Trump comes out and says, oh, I don't support a nationwide ban. It, it should be left to the states. It should be left to the states, people. Well, we've seen what happens when it's left to the states. We just saw it in Arizona. And that's why Steve Bannon is so miserable. Because their whole rebrand is now trash. This is this is a, one of the reasons Donald Trump flip flopped. This is an ad that the Biden campaign has been running, and it's really effective. I want you to watch it. For 54 years, they were trying to get Roe v. Wade terminated, and I did it, and I'm proud to have done it. In 2016, Donald Trump ran to overturn Roe v. Wade. Now, in 2024, he's running to pass a national ban on a woman's mm. right to choose. I'm running that to make Roe v. Wade coffee. the law of the land again, so women have a federal guarantee to the right to choose. Donald Trump doesn't trust women. I do. I'm Joe Biden, and I approve this message. Because for 54 years, they were trying to get Roe v. Wade terminated, and I did. You've seen it. You've seen it everywhere. Donald Trump has gone on news program after news program, bragged about it at his rallies. It was me. I did it for you. And by the way, I don't drink that coffee. That is some sweet coffee. Oh, Whew. I drink black coffee. Um, but yeah, you saw it. You saw him at his rallies. You saw it out of his own mouth. He just told you right there. I overturned Roe, and he came out and he said it again. He said it again. He made his own statement. Nobody messing with his words. No, nobody, you know. I'm not me. Not me. This is what he wants you to hear. This is what Donald Trump wants you to hear on this subject. Let's hear out of Donald Trump himself. Many people have asked me what my position is on abortion and abortion rights, especially since I was proudly the person responsible for the ending of something that all legal scholars, both sides, wanted and, in fact, demanded be ended. Roe v. Wade. They wanted it ended. It must be remembered that the Democrats are the radical ones on this position because they support abortion up to and even beyond the ninth month. The concept of having an abortion in the later months and even execution after birth, and that's exactly what it is. The baby is born, the baby is executed after birth is unacceptable, and almost everyone agrees with that. Many people have asked me what... All right, let's talk about that. That insanity, that, that ridiculously idiotic, ignorant statement. No one is executing babies after they're born. There's a term for that. It's called murder. Nobody's doing that. <sighs> to, to, to frame that for you in a way that you can understand just how heinous this is, I want you to think about Every one of those morons, stick with me. I'm going to set this up for you so you frame this in, in, in the way I want it framed. Every one of you who engages online or with Republicans has had someone walk up to you and tell you, we're not a, we're not a republic. I mean, we're not a democracy. We're a republic. We're not a democracy. We're a republic. Where that comes from is in groups like Turning Point USA and all these right-wing uh, recruitment groups, these cult recruitment groups. Uh, they have a video that they play for people, and it's a really smooth-talking guy. And what he does is he compares a pure democracy, which does not exist because a pure democracy cannot function. A pure democracy is where we vote on everything. Everything the government does, everybody votes on it. Of course, that's idiotic. Nobody does that. That's not a functioning government. They compare that 
with our republic. And then he goes on to tell you all the negative things about democracy and how bad democracy is. And that's how they sell these right-wingers on killing democracy. It's made up. They invent a, a, a straw man, a bad guy that doesn't really exist, and then defeat him. This, they're killing babies after they're born thing, is the same exact thing. There's a story, and it's told by a guy that, that is a really, I, I'm a pastor, I really care, I love children, and I want to save the babies. And they tell the story of an abortion. Now, a DNA, there can be complications in a DNA. There can. There was a case where they were performing an abortion, and the heart wouldn't stop beating. This fetus was mangled in the process. It was late term. The fetus was going to die anyways. It was one of those abortions where it needed to be done to protect the mother. But because it had a heartbeat, even though it couldn't survive, the doctor asked the mother, which he legally has to do, do you want us to try to save it? Which they know they would not have been able to do. But they have to do it legally. They are required. They take that story and morph it into this baby was born and they killed it after it was born. And that's not the case. It's, it's just not the case. This was an aborted fetus that was, you know, abortions are not nice, folks. They, they are not nice. They, it is not a procedure people voluntarily go through. The fetus is destroyed. Well, this fetus came out with a heartbeat in pieces. And again, they are legally required to ask the mother, do you want us to take actions to try to resuscitate this piece of this fetus? It's the law. They have to do it. They have to do it to cover their butt. One woman riot says, had to create a channel just to respond. Thanks for everything you do, Paul. It's so appreciated. Pro-democracy folks need to stick together. The future for our kids depends on it. Amen. We're going to talk more about that. That is not killing a born child. That is not what is, we are not talking about that when we talk about late-term abortions. But they have morphed that into that talking point, and they tell each other in their churches. They tell each other in their anti-abortion groups. They tell each other online the exact thing that you just saw their candidate say. E.T. says, any medical procedure can have complications. Absolutely, E.T. That's the point of what I'm telling you. Their candidate for president just told that story, that they're killing babies after they're born. And it's all based on that same type of nonsense. Let me explain to you what is really happening. But actually, let me let Amanda Zorowski explain it. This is Amanda Zorowski and her husband, Josh. This is one of our willow boxes. This is just filled with some of the things that we had started gathering for her while I was pregnant. Yep. There's her little baby book. This is the outfit that she was gonna maybe wear home from the hospital. All of these. Um, this is The blanket that she was in. And these are her little footprints. It's okay.
That's a powerful ad. We've talked about Anders, uh, uh, we've talked about Amanda Zorowski before, talking about the trigger laws. The trigger law. This happened to her because of the trigger law they put in place here in Texas. Several brave women. We've talked about Kate Cox before. Her water broke. They made her keep that fetus inside her. They had named it. These are not people that were out using abortion for birth control, and they wanted this child. That is what we're talking about. When they talk about a late-term abortion, that's the situation. They're talking about a child. Something has gone horrifically wrong. Folks, they will they will save a fetus. They will. If it is humanly possible, they will save a child. Nobody's volunteering to go just because their baby's a preemie or whatever. That's the reality of it. That is the reality of it. And this is what Trump thinks about Amanda Zorowski. Do you believe in punishment for abortion? Yes or no, as a principle? Uh, the answer is that there has to be some form of punishment. For the woman? Yeah, there has to be some form. Do you believe in... I mean, this is the same guy. I don't believe in a national band. My my ass. My ass. They were going to try to rebrand. And Trump's not the only one. Carrie Lake, who's running for Senate in Arizona. People are like, why am I seeing Carrie Lake? She's running for Senate, folks. She is running in for Senate in Arizona. Talking about this is her. God bless the guys over at Midas Touch. You know I love Midas Touch. This is Jordy uh, in a video he did about Carrie Lake because she came out like Trump. Remember, they were supposed to have this nationwide Republican rebranding. Oh, it's just the let the states. Cantisa Hood says... Uh, Look at old laws use against use against the GOP. Yeah, I, I I get what you're trying to say there. And Mr. Newton Newton says Republicans lack empathy, morals, and have zero respect for life or women. It's all about subjugating people. They must not be allowed to rule. Exactly. That is where we're going with this, folks. I am telling you. Wait for it. Wait for it. Let's let let's see what Carrie you know let, let's see this video about Carrie Lake because she has also come out against a national ban. It should be up to the states. And then yesterday when this happened in Arizona, while she celebrated the trigger law that Douchey Douchey pushed through, uh, now she's just not so happy about it. This is what she said before all this happened. Arizona Senate candidate Carrie Lake now says she opposes the state Supreme Court decision to uphold the law banning abortion that was created in 1864. Carrie, you know we always have the receipts. Obviously, I think Roe v. Wade should be overturned. And I think the Supreme Court, I have a good feeling that they're going to do the right thing this time. And, and again, what I'll echo what Steve just said. We have a great law on the books right now. If that happens, uh, we will be a state where... We will not be taking the lives of our unborn anymore. There's a territorial era law which bans all abortion. Zippo, over. Mm -hmm. Which law do you think should take effect? My personal belief is that all life matters, all life counts, and all life is precious, and I don't believe in abortion. I think the older law is going to, take a, an, is going to go into effect. That's what I believe will happen. Okay, but, and, but you approve of that? Uh, uh, what, at, at conception? I believe life begins at conception. Okay, what do we do about abortion pills? What do we do about... I don't uh, think abortion pills should be legal. That's it, a very... Not in Arizona. Arizona. 
Are any of you ladies out there buying the rebranding that they suddenly believe this should just be up to the states? No. No. They are going to pass. If you give them power, if you allow them to take power, they are going to pass a nationwide ban as soon as they possibly can. We talked about it on a previous show. Preacher Johnson said that he has talked to uh, Donald Trump about this, and if he gets a majority, he has laws ready to go. What do you think he's talking about? He's talking, in his words, radically transforming our federal government. He is. And folks, you know, I keep saying this, we're losing We are losing on this. And the reason I say that, I mean, these are the states that have ballot measures coming up. And everybody's very excited about this and and, and great work, folks. You know, this is the kind of thing that I try to tell people. These are states where there are ballot measures coming up. We've got ballot measures in Arizona, Arkansas, Colorado, Missouri, Montana, Nebraska, Nevada, South Dakota, and now Florida. The Florida Supreme Court weighed in and said, yes, it will be on the ballot. And that should give you some idea how scared Republicans are of these ballot measures and how unpopular they know this is because they've gotten their clocks cleaned in every single election that abortion has been on the ballot. Republicans have gotten their clocks cleaned. They get decimated because people don't support this. They don't like what's happening, yet it's happening. But this is why I'm not happy and why I'm saying our work is just beginning. We have to get much more militant about this. My view is really simple. If you're a woman and you can't terminate your pregnancy for any reason that you choose, up until that fetus can live on its own. That, that's my only restriction on it. Can the fetus live on its own? If the fetus can live on its own, it's no longer your decision. That's a living creature, autonomous creature at that point. It is a, is a living, autonomous human, human being at that point. At that point, I don't support abortion that late. If, if it's preemie and they can save take the child and raise it, fine. You don't have to raise that child. You can put that child up for adoption. At that point, it's a living autonomous being. But up until that point, that is your body. And if you cannot terminate that pregnancy, you are not free. You are not free. A man can rape you, impregnate you, and then force a connection with you forever. That is not freedom. That is not freedom. That is ownership. And these laws, these ballot measures, while Politically, as a Democrat, yes, I'm very happy. As a man, as a father, as a grandfather, they sicken me because they're all political compromises that will pass. They are designed to where they, for the lack of a better term, split the baby. They're designed to not be offensive. So a lot of these ballot measures that are designed to overturn draconian laws like Arizona's, it's got a 24-week limitation on it. And for me, that's unacceptable. (laughs) It's not your choice. It's not your business. The only person that makes the ultimate, not even the doctor makes this decision, in my opinion. 
It is the mother and only the mother. It is her body. And for me, these ballot measures don't go far enough. I, we, and folks, they're not going to stop, folks. Even when we pass these ballot measures, they do it. They, they pass laws. They do everything they can. They abuse the courts to slow a woman down to make that fetus age inside her so they can control the situation and force her to do what they want to do. They will not quit. And for me, there is no compromise. It is really simple. Right up until the moment that that fetus can become an autonomous being living on its own, it is not your business, and it never will be. And that's where we need to be. Mindy, uh, Mindy Nitra says, gee, what happens to the pro-lifer if she needs life-saving care? Yeah, the Duggars, they, they go get abortion. That's what they do. They go somewhere else. They've got money. They can go somewhere else. And if they do get their nationwide ban, they're going to the, the wealthy are going to do what they did before Roe v. Wade, which is they're just going to go. They're going to go to France. They'll hop on a plane, send their little pregnant daughter to France to have her abortion. CC, great point. We need to stop calling them pro-life. They are not pro-life. They're anti-choice. Absolutely, words matter. And framing this in the proper way matters. But this is what Republicans do. And I'm telling you, they are not going to quit on this subject, folks. Even when we win, even when we pass these ballot measures, even when we take Congress, they will fight in the courts. They will fight. We must end the Republican Party. Jamie B says, don't forget to hit thumbs up button. Yeah, please do, folks. Hit the subscribe button, hit the thumbs up button, hit the notifications button so you can hear when I've got, you know, in case I do a live or on the road or something, it'll notify you that it's happening. Mr. Newton, we know that the ultimate goal of the far right is to ban women from voting. They are property tax, that are, they are property that are needed to make sons for holy wars. Yes, that's what they look at. That That is what they look at them like. They are there to produce people to fill their pews. That's what the churches want. Ren Crenshaw, I appreciate the support. That is the church's position. Women are property to produce people to fill their pews. And no, one, I don't want your religion. And two, stay the hell away from my children, my daughters, my grandchildren, stay away from them. So, yeah, we have to fight. We have to fight. We can never stop fighting. We cannot get complacent. We have to end the Republican Party. There has to be that kind of cost to it. Or the next thing that comes up after Republicans, they will pander to these people also. Because these Anti-choice people are standing out there with the, take my money, please, take my money. That That's what they're doing, folks. That's what they're doing. And it's not just abortion. They gaslight on every single issue. This is Marjorie Trader Green, Farty Marge. I want you to listen to what she says here. But let's talk about what this really is, Steve. This is a war on Christianity. The Ukrainian government is attacking Christians. The Ukrainian government is executing priests. Um, Russia is not doing that. They're not attacking Christianity. As a matter of fact, they seem to be protecting it. So that's something else that's clear and obvious to many people that are looking closely at what's going on. I'm not praising Vladimir Putin. I'm not praising... Yeah, she is. She's absolutely, absolutely spewing Vladimir Putin's talking points right there. 
And this is important. This is important. Yeah, she said executing priests. There's a reason she's saying that specifically. That is a Russian propaganda talking point because Russia is attacking priests. They are murdering priests. There have been 40 priests killed in Russian-occupied territories. And the Republicans have a problem because they are pro-Russia, selling Putin's bidding. Uh, But, you know, uh, Russians are killing Catholic priests and Protestant priests. They're torturing Catholic priests and Protestant priests. They are attacking their compounds. They're attacking their facilities. They're forcing their, their students to flee. They're forcing their teachers to flee. They're burning their libraries, their holy scripts, their, their Bibles. Russia is really doing that, folks. The Tavrisky Christian Institute which is what this story specifically is about. This is the Protestant teachers from the Tavrisky Christian Institute. That is that was right here. Let me show you on. Let's go to the map. This was where the Tavrisky Christian Institute was in Ukraine, right on the Dnieper River. Let me back out. Back out. You can see exactly where it was. The Russians came. They took their entire facility, made a military base out of it. They tortured the priests there. The students were forced to flee. They accused them of being spies because they had religious texts written in Ukrainian and English. There's more to that story, why they accused them of being spies. Accuse your enemy of that which you are guilty. This is Kirill, Patriarch Kirill. He is the head of the Russian Orthodox Church. This is Patriarch Kirill. He is the head of the Russian Orthodox Church. Patriarch Kirill of Moscow was known as Vladimir Mikhailovich Gwadyayev. He is a KGB operative. He is a spy. That is what he did for a living. He is still a KGB operative, or actually FSB operative, and a spy. The Ukrainians... The Republicans went nuts because the Ukrainians started searching churches. They got tips that the churches were being used like the Russians have done. They have always done this. Everywhere there's a Rus- there are Russian Orthodox churches here in the United States, They the FSB utilizes those churches to send messages to their operating spies. They run spies out of their Russian Orthodox churches. The Ukrainians started raiding Russian Orthodox churches. The Republicans who want to, you know, that evangelical movement ran with the narrative that, oh God, you know, this is why we don't support the Ukrainians. They're attacking the churches. They, they hate you. They're attacking the churches. That is not true. They are searching the churches and they are finding IEDs. They're finding Russian spies living in these churches. They're finding FSB communications intercepts in these churches because the Russian Orthodox Church works with the Russian government. That's why they are, you know, a country that had no religion suddenly has one religion because they cooperate with the government. They work with the government. I mean, these are explosive folks that they're finding in these churches. So you have Marge telling people here in the United States that the Ukrainians are doing exactly what the Republicans, or I should say the Russians, 
same thing. I do that all the time. Same thing. Distinction without a difference. The, the Russians are doing. She just accused the Ukrainians of murdering, murdering priests. They are not murdering priests. They have arrested a few and tried them for espionage, but they haven't murdered them. Mr. Newton says, I could not help myself, but I believed that Texas Paul would look good in the patriarch. <laughs> Thank you, Omega Yeti. Exactly. Moscow March. Moscow March. Folks, it's I show you that meme all the time from Joseph Goebbels. It is the operating procedure for the Republican Party. Timothy says a separation of the church and the state is a huge foundation of American. For absolutely, we have to fight until we get that back. But yes, I show you that meme all the time from Joseph Goebbels. It's the truth. It is what the Republicans do. They act just like the Nazis. Accuse your enemy of that of which you are guilty. She just did it right there. Just You just saw it with your own eyes. She accused the Ukrainians of what even their own churches are reporting back is happening. You know, the Catholic Church is really pissed off about this. This is not a hidden fact that the Russians are doing this. Trina Longa says, read Bill Browder, freezing order, Putin hates him. Yeah, Bill Browder is a good source. I, I actually follow him online. So Marge just did their bidding. She accused the Ukrainians of that which the Russians are guilty of. I mean, ha Putin's soldiers are in our government. Putin's spies, his assets are in our government. She is a congresswoman, for Christ's sake. And she doesn't stop there. She, I mean, she doesn't stop there. This just blows my mind. She went back to her district to talk to the people in her district, and this is what she had to tell them. She's criticizing Mike Johnson for not being pro-Russia enough. She's criticizing Mike Johnson uh, for daring to work with Democrats to do the awful thing of not causing our government to shut down and collapse. But she goes on to expand with this. I feel if I had it my way, we would have impeached him a long time ago. <laughs> Actually, if I had it my way, we would have been successful in our objection on January 6th, and he wouldn't even be president. <laughs> yeah, their objection on January 6th was a coup. There was no actual objection made because there was no objection to make. There was no legal argument to make. She says it as though... Oh, well, we just, we had objections. We would have succeeded. But what she's really saying is we would have overturned the election. Give me power. Because I would have overturned the election. She's telling you right to your face. Joe Biden would have never been president. And if I have my way, we will impeach Joe Biden. We'll remove him for nothing, for nothing, just because they can. Folks, they're telling you to your face. They're telling you to your face what they're going to do. I've played you the video before of Mike Lee standing there talking to his donors, just like you just saw Marjorie Trader Green telling her constituents, I'd have made January 6th happen. It really, we'd have succeeded if it had been me. Mike Lee has stood before his donors. I played the video for you before and told them directly. I get my way. Social Security and Medicare, they're gone. You're not going to have to pay them taxes.
believe them. You know, I'm going to give you a big I told you so. But I told you they were going to do this with abortion. We are on our heels, folks. We are not winning this fight. Because folks are just getting into it. They're just starting to wake up. Which is disheartening for me because I have been screaming for years, these Republicans are sorry bastards. This is what they want to do. They want to end abortion. They want to fill the pews. They want to force their religion into your schools. They're telling you. Hell, they're doing it. They've told you. They want to end Social Security and Medicare so that they don't have to pay taxes. They're telling you they want to shut the border down. Thank you, Nancy Ken. I appreciate the support. Folks, you know what that means? You know, if you if you draw a line from the southern Canadian border to the southern Mexico border, there's a half a billion people that live in that region between the United States and Mexico. Half a billion people. Cecilia Coleman says, Marjorie Trader Green wants Johnson's job. Yeah, actually, she does. She does. Actually, I think she wants to be one heartbeat away from the presidency is what I think she wants. I think she wants to be Trump's vice president, her first choice. But you're right. She wants to be Speaker of the House. She'll take any power she can get. And when she gets it, if you're complacent, they're going to take Social Security and Medicare. They're going to take your right to vote. You know, read the 2025 project. I keep linking it for you. Read what they're telling you. I told you. I told you for years. I told you. When they were sitting there talking out of both sides of their mouth, saying, oh, well, this is a state's rights issue. We don't want to overturn Roe v. Wade. When Brett Kavanaugh, Amy Coathanger Barrett, Neil Gorsuch, all sat there under oath and told you to your face Roe v. Wade was settled law. I told you they're lying. Don't believe them. They're lying. And what did they do first chance they got? Overturned that settled law. Folks, come on. We're losing this fight. We're losing this fight because people are just now starting to get into it. These ballot measures are helping. They're a start. But treat them like that, folks, please. Treat them like they're just a start. There are so many people out there that are just not, they don't do politics. You know, they they, they do whatever their their profession is. They focus on that and hunting and fishing and going to movies and every other damn thing in the world but politics. And all they get are Republican sound bites. Folks, you folks, I, I, I brag on you all the time. I tell people all the time, hey, come join us. We have the best community there is online. These people know their shit. Brett K. Mack says, thank you for what you do. No, thank you for what you do. And that is what I'm telling you, folks. Get people into these conversations. We have to. We're just starting this fight. Everywhere one of these ballot measures are on the ballot, they needed volunteers. There were good people on the ground in those states, red states in, in Florida. You know, you're, a lot of people are sitting in red states saying, uh, what can I do? It's all Republican around here. That's what you can do. E.T. says, uh, they have practically overturned a settled amendment. Get out that vote. Amen, brother. That's what I'm telling you. That's what I'm telling you. That's what I'm telling you. 
They got us on our heels right now, but you got good people getting out there fighting. And everybody says, hey, what can I do? What can I do? Work with these groups. Every one of these ballot amendments took somebody that was real, 100% good people that said, I'm going to change this shit. And they needed help. They needed people to knock on doors. Arizona, they needed 383,000 signatures. They've already got 500,000. They want 3 million signatures. Help out. If you're in Arizona, help out. Volunteer, that's what you can do. Get people into politics because we no longer have that luxury anymore of just living our lives and not paying attention. Because if you haven't noticed, they're winning. I screamed for decades, they're going to take your abortion rights away. And they did. I lost. Thanks for the support, Michael Thomas. Sherry Foster says, this MAGA thing has a bit of a serial killer-like vibe to it when you think about it. Yeah. Yeah. I lost. I did. I'm not ashamed to admit it. I get up, I brush myself off, and I keep fighting. I tried to tell people, and and, and I lost. They got it overturned. Let's build on this momentum. Let's build on this momentum where people are showing up to vote. If they weren't so scared of these amendments, they wouldn't be suing to take them away. You know, they just lost in Florida. New Kid says, we have the we have to change this shite. Otherwise, we face a, a – is that pronounced Gilead or Gilead? I never watched that series. I know what it's about. But yeah, that's what I want to leave you with today. That's what I want to leave you with today. That's what you need to do. You're so bright. You know what's going on. I am so damn glad to be able to do this with you. You know, I tell you all the time, I I come in here, you know, depressed from reading the news and and talking to Republicans and all that. Thanks for the support, uh, Teresa Fisher. She says, vote blue all the way. I do. I come in here depressed. Is the G a J or a G sound? Hard G. Gilead. Okay, thank you. That's what I would, that's what I wanted to know. You people, man, you you make me feel good. I get done with this show. Ask Mrs. Texas Paul. I get done with this show, and I'm happy again. Half my show is spent looking down because I'm reading what you have to say. But don't just say it to me. Bring people into this community. Let's grow this community. Hit the thumbs up button. Hit the subscribe button. Let's get more people in here. Spread this wherever you can. Please get this message out. But more than that, you folks, you folks, be forces within your community. Peter, thanks for the support, man. I know 50 bucks is a lot of money, and I really appreciate it. Do that. I mean, really. You know so much. I mean, you see yourself. You see the conversations. This isn't hyperbole. This isn't me kissing your ass. You are the folks that are... George Carlin said, think how stupid the average American is and know that half of them are dumber than that. You're the other direction. You're the smart ones. You're the ones that actually know what's going on. Share that knowledge. Volunteer in these organizations that are gathering these signatures because I guarantee you, these voters that are going to come out for these ballot amendments, ballot amendments, man, those are new voters. Those are new people to bring into the party. They are a tremendous opportunity to grow our party because if they'll look at that issue, we can reach them and talk about other issues and we can keep the ball rolling, keep the momentum rolling. 
Admiral Newton says, don't be depressed, get angry, swear at the cussing and, <laughs> and fight, inspire us to fight with you. That's what that's what I'm here for, folks. That's what I'm doing. And that is my rant for today. That is what I have for you today. Recap, they're trying to rebrand their stance on abortion. They're trying to go back to that same stuff they were selling you before when I was screaming, they're going to overturn abortion. They're going to overturn abortion. They always said, oh, it's just a state's issue. We're not going to overturn a Roe v. Wade. That's settled law. It's just state's issue and how states want to rate. And look what they did. Look what they did. First chance they got. They're going to do a nationwide ban. They're trying to do a flim flam, shim sham, pull the wool over your eyes and say, oh, well, we're not for that. It's states' rights. They're going back to the same argument. Walter Klopp says, Me and the wife just filled out our ballot in Pennsylvania. Amen, brother. Amen. Amen. Let's do this. Let's do this. Well, folks, enjoy some Texas cities at night. That's what I have for you today. Thank you for being here. Let's get in this fight. They got us on our heels, but we're pushing back. Let's build that momentum and get it done. Love you, folks. Old Texas Paul out.